So we're making improvements here with our ship. We can move it diagonally and we don't have to pause for the event. Um, but there was one thing we left out I want to point out is our speed is based off of frame rate. Okay, if you remember, we went through all that headache to get this clock and be able to track actual game time. And no, we're not going to get any spikes in time, and generally, yeah, we're going to get a nice fluid fluid experience here, but um, we also need to include some frame rate here, So, or the clock. So times, I'm just going to say clock, get, what is it? Oh, okay, times elapsed last frame. Now, now we have some true time-based movement, but notice our DT, our time base, our time since last frame is extremely small, right? And our now that we're going off time, see when we're going off frame rate, those frames are just passing by real fast. But now that we're we're using our clock, well, realistically, yeah, we're going, we're moving our ship 0.02 units per second. All right, so how many seconds is it going to take to get our ship to move across the screen? Well, what's 1 divided by 0 0.02? That's 50 seconds. So if I run this, let's just left, okay, start your stopwatch. After 50 seconds, we're going to get to the edge of the screen, all right? Not not ideal, all right? So now we got to adjust this constant here, I don't know, 0.2. You know, it's kind of, and remember our units here, I mean, this is, our unit is one this way or one that way, but yeah, that's maybe a little more playable. I, I, maybe, maybe a little faster. Let's, let's try three. Point three. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. But that is a little disturbing when I push up and it goes slower, and I push left and it goes fast, then I go down and it goes slow. Uh, again, we'll fix that a little later. Um, I want to change our control scheme up to be more asteroids. This, this is very Geometry Wars-ish where we can just immediately move whatever direction we want to go. And I want to do more of an asteroids type of thing where if I push up, I accelerate up, and I just keep going up. And if I was flying in space, hopefully you can imagine yourself flying in space. But if I turn on my rockets, it's going to push my ship forward, and my ship's just going to move that direction. And if I turn off my rockets, my ship's going to continue moving that direction until some other force acts upon it. Now, we'll pretend there's no other planets with gravity around but we're just going to have the only force being our thrust. Or if you can think of your car, you push the pedal and you feel that acceleration, but eventually if you don't take your foot off the pedal, the accelerator pedal that is, the gas pedal, um, you'll get some red and blue lights behind you. So ideally you push the pedal till you hit whatever the speed limit is for the road that you are on, then you let go of the pedal or loosen up, but you also have other forces acting upon you like friction or maybe you're going up a hill. So it's necessary that you keep applying the accelerator to counteract those forces. But we're going to pretend we're in space and we just we go and we keep going that direction until we say go another direction. Well, now it's time to do a little bit of basic physics. If you've had physics class, this will be nice. If you haven't had physics, this is intro stuff, so I wouldn't stress it too much. Um, here are the equations. Hopefully, this should look familiar. Our position is equal to our uh, initial position, or wherever we were at, our current position, plus velocity times delta. Ooh, there's fly the friendly skies delta time. All right, hopefully this equation looks familiar. This is what we were using before. And then let's do, uh, we, we need to update the velocity now. Before we didn't update the velocity, if I push forward or push my gas pedal, my velocity in my car changes. And we weren't doing that before. Now we're going to do that. Um, if I push my gas pedal down, I expect my velocity to change. I'm not going to be at a at a zero velocity, I'm going to be moving. And the nice thing about vectors is we also move a direction. It'd be odd if you push your gas pedal and you start moving left. All right. So how do we update velocity? Well, velocity is equal to whatever our, our velocity currently is plus acceleration times the amount of time that has changed. For example, if I push my gas pedal after five seconds, if my delta time is five seconds, I'm going to go be moving a lot faster than if only one second has gone by. So acceleration depends on 
the amount of time that has changed. Say I push my gas pedal down as hard as I can and 100 seconds goes by, well, chances are I have a car on fire with a lot of red and blue lights behind us. Anyway, hopefully you get the idea that delta time is important. So we need to update our velocity and then we need to further use that velocity in our position equation. So I'm going to take that, well, maybe I can leave that on the screen. I don't know. Maybe it gets in the way of our code. It looks like it might get in the way of our code. Um, let's, uh, we have up here at the top, we have ship position. Now we need to store velocity. Vector 2D ship velocity. We'll start that at zero. And then in our our update, we're going to check key state again. Um, but now this time, instead of updating our position directly, we're going to update our our uh, velocity. Okay, so I'm actually going to say ship velocity, velocity, copy, paste. I always get nervous when I copy and paste because I always cause an error that way. And then speed, well speed is not the right term for this. It's It's our acceleration. Okay, it's it's 0.3 times the amount of time that's gone by. Uh, so let's let's call this acceleration. Acceleration. So we're going to update our velocity by that acceleration. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking our initial velocity, our, our current velocity, ship velocity, plus acceleration. But acceleration, we added the delta time multiplication right here. Okay, now we need to use that velocity to change our ship position. Well, let's just do that right here. We say check key state. We should say, we should say I'm going to say update. Let's refactor a little bit. Update uh, velocity. Let's just do that. Update velocity, update velocity. Go over here and call this update velocity. And then here I'm going to say ship position. Get ship position. Uh, no, ship position plus, yeah, sorry, velocity, velocity, ship velocity, how about that? Ship velocity times clock dot get, uh, or time elapsed since last frame. All right, notice delta time, it comes in to play twice here. Our delta time affects our acceleration, and then once we've uh, affected our acceleration, we again use it for velocity. Because if, if we're going 60 miles an hour and a, uh, an hour has passed, we're obviously, hopefully, going to be 60 miles down the road. So they're kind of independent, but not so. Okay. Uh, and then we're also using a trick called Euler integration, where computers sample in discrete amount of time. So this update runs, I don't know, anywhere from one frame a second to up to two, three, four thousand, whatever we were measuring before, several frames a second. Um, but even even if I had this super, super high performance clock, I'm still sampling discrete amounts of time. And this, this is an issue we see quite commonly with computers, is we're trying to represent something continuous with something that can only store ones and zeros or discrete values. All right, let's see how this affects our game. Control, I'm going to Take this off the screen. Control F5. Build. Succeed. All right, watch. Left. See? Huh? Huh? That's kind of fun. Right. I'm not pushing the keys right now. I'm not. No. Let's push the left button. I'm going to push the up, but not the left. I'm going to push the down, but not the left. Now let's just do the right. See, we're starting to get a, a ship that's moving with acceleration. If I could just get that triangle to rotate and pretend like it's throwing fire out behind it, that that'd give us a more encompassing experience. Do you do you feel us feel me giving some hints into where we're going now? <laughs> but still, that's kind of fun. It's it's uh, moving across the screen, and I have control of it. Um, oh, there's something else. I'm trying to remember. Well, I paused the video, tried to think there for a minute, but I can't remember what I wanted to say. So we'll just stop the video here. It's nice we have acceleration and velocity. And uh, our next step, I think, will be let's do a little bit of refactoring and then maybe get this thing uh, rotating.